The late 2000s were a time to be alive. It was a time before Instagram, when it was cool to be on Facebook, even cooler to have a Tumblr. Harry Potter still had new movies, there were a lot of vampires and werewolves, but if I were to pick which dude was in the center of it all, I know exactly who it'd be. No, I'm not talking about him or them either. In the midst of it was a young man who redefined what being cool meant. He single-handedly sent us into a geek chic era where nerds were viewed as the object of our desires. Suddenly, we were handed a new option for what a leading man could be. So before we either got dealt the macho jock, superstar, or the brooding rebel, what was once a trope of a character to be the butt of jokes was now the star. Being sweet, awkward, witty, and funny was overtaking what was once our yardstick for desirability. It was the Michael Sarah era. Michael Sarah was on Arrested Development but really blew up in 2007 in Superbad and for the next few years he would go on to star in some of the biggest films of those years. Superbad opened at number one in the US box office making it the highest domestic grossing high school comedy of all time and this would be just the beginning of a whirlwind career for Michael. This was a movie for the outcasts, the awkward kids. This was a movie about them for them but in the end all the guys get the girls including McLovin. It was revolutionary. Just three months after Superbad was released, another huge hit would come out and further cement Michael as not only a star, but a promising male lead. Juno was the indie film of indie films for teens of the late 2000s. It was the highest grossing Academy nominated film and is regarded as one of the best films of the 2000s. It just really made a mark culturally, visually, musically, you know, there was definitely a Juno effect. Then came a film that really put Sarah as a heartthrob leading man as the cool romantic bass player that had two beautiful girls vying for his affection in Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. It was probably this movie alone that sent Zippa putties, workwear, and band sales through the roof, and we loved it. Then in 2009 came the indiest of the indiest movies that not many people have seen, Paper Heart, again a love story starring Sarah, and then Youth in Revolt, again a love story starring Sarah. One thing was for sure, Hollywood was doing everything to keep Michael Sarah as the object of our desires, and we were eating it up. You either got it or you don't, you got yeah, it. you got it. <laughs> I got it. This dude's been busy since 2007 with seven movies under his belt by 2009. 2010, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World was released and yet again we have Sarah as the hero we love to root for in his charming awkward way romancing the girl and us with some sick guitar moves. And without notice, this would be the last time we saw Michael Sarah in his romantic lead role. He went on to take two years off returning in 2012 and since then he's acted in a lot of short films, indie films, and comedy films where he is not the central romantic lead. So what's the point of this video? This is a Michael Sarah appreciation video. This guy has done so much for mankind and I am so stinking excited to see him in the new Barbie movie. But I want to see him back in his leading swoonworthy romantic lead roles. Justice for pale awkward men. What I'm saying is we need a Sarah renaissance. A Sarah renaissance. Subscribe to my channel, thanks. Well, I guess it's like the end of our time together. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I know, it does suck, especially since we just got in the hot tub. <laughs>